People always ask me how to create beautiful interiors, how to find inspiration, how to be a creative interior designer. Doing all of this is actually hard work, but not having the right foundation for the design process will make it even harder. Today, I wanna share with you one of the bases or foundations of good interior design so that you can make your interior design process significantly better and improve your ability to create beautiful interiors. Let's begin. Every project I work on begins in finding the inspiration behind my design. Doing this not only challenges my mind, but it also forces me to be creative. And that is where most of us get stuck. I always like to tie my projects to the surrounding environment, especially when they happen to be breathtaking. If you're working on a project and the surrounding environment is quite amazing, that's a safe place to start your design process. As I start thinking about what I want this project to be, I do not necessarily start thinking about the physical qualities of the project. I used to do that, but I have trained my mind with a lot of work to think about the abstract first. And that is what my first design board will reflect. I always see people talking about mood boards when for me, what they really refer to is a collage. I wanna share with you what a mood board is for me, and I really just wanna show you my process and the workflow that works for me. So I hope it can help you too. It's pretty simple. A mood board is a compilation of abstract imagery. When you start working on a project and you start having a conversation with the client, you have to agree on certain things. And for this project, we agreed that we wanted this space to feel relaxing and calm, quiet and serene. And these words are now stuck in my head as I try to figure out what they really mean. Today, I'm using Milanote to create my board and I'm pretty new to this program, but I have been enjoying it. And that is why I wanted to share with you how I've been using it. Some sources that I have been using lately to find inspiration are Unsplash and Pinterest. So I'm typing words that I believe will convey this mood and that will allow me to find the images that are suitable for this project. I pretty much like this image, so I'm gonna save it. And I installed a Milanote extension to my computer so that whenever I see an image, I can quickly save it. If you're interested, I will leave the link to that extension down in the description of this video. I did install Milanote on my computer, but if you wanna use Milanote on the browser, you can do that as well. As I was thinking about this design, I had this idea of having a space that is floating. I kind of like the qualities of this verb or action, you know, when something is floating. And this particular action can also convey those feelings of serenity and quietness and calmness. I remember once reading about one of the houses from famous architect Mies van der Rohe, the Farnsworth house. And I thought of this house because it's kind of floating um, on this horizontal plane and it's offset from the ground. The original intent of this structure and how it was designed and built this way was that the surrounding environment and the location had a lot of flaws. But even so, I think that the outcome is so beautiful and so effortless. One of the most difficult challenges of an architect or of an interior designer is to be process oriented. You know, we tend to be product driven instead. So this means that we're constantly thinking about the final design and how is it physically gonna look like when a better approach would be to just fall in love with the process and just find different ideas and those ideas and that design process is eventually gonna take you to that final iteration. The concept board for me is the way to test if my mood board was done correctly. I make this type of board to bring those abstract qualities from the mood board into the actual physical qualities of the space. So the concept board really is a continuation from the mood board in a more physical and a more clear way so that you can start to visualize a little bit 
how this space is gonna look. So at this point, I try to seek images that are a little bit more clear in terms of the design direction, but I still, I do not like to add uh, images of whole interiors, of complete interior spaces, because for me, I'm not trying to duplicate those interiors and it's really distracting for me and it kind of like takes me away from my own vision and my own original ideas. What I do is that I include a lot of vignettes or snapshots or details to kind of like put all these things together to create my own designs. A material board typically comes after. It's basically the samples, the materials that you're gonna be using. And again, this is also, should be a continuation from your mood board, from your concept board, and now to the material board. There are two types of material boards. You can have digital samples, or you can also have them physical samples. And I do find that it's way more enjoyable to have physical samples, to be able to touch them, to see the texture. But in some cases, I do not have access to the physical samples. And this is when I would start playing around with the digital board, but I wouldn't rely on it too much because the colors are gonna show different on a screen than when you see them in person. After it comes the furniture board. The furniture board is so much fun in my opinion because I love furniture. I think it's one of those items that really complete a space and really bring it alive. Also, it adds the functionality aspect to it, which is so important in interior design. For this project, I was thinking of something more around something that flows with the space, something that kind of belongs to this space. And sometimes when you're making these boards and you want to show it uh, to your clients, you kind of want to have uh, the information from those pieces available to you, which is why I like to make notes and also super useful to have the links close to those pictures and it's easily done in Milanote. You can also hide the links just for, you know, aesthetic purposes, but I always like to just have them there available for me. Another thing super useful is that here in Milanovich you can add comments to the furniture and this is really useful for clients when you're just sourcing all these furniture items. They can just comment on it. They can say like, oh no, I hate it or you know, I love it. So it actually makes the process a little bit more straightforward and it's kind of faster to come to those final decisions. If you want a more detailed video of how I use Milanote, let me know in the comments of this video. You know guys, I'm always exploring with new programs and softwares and I just like to challenge myself to try new programs. So I'd be happy to do that if you guys want. Knowing how to create a board that actually communicates your design intent with the client is actually a skill. You are not making a collage and it has to be a very thoughtful part of the process and you need to see it as a very important part of the process. If you do a mood board the right way, if the message is clear, if the design intent is delivered and your clients resonate with what you're trying to tell them, then the rest of the process is going to be easier and it's just going to unfold naturally. So I would recommend to you that all of your designs are backed up by a mood board, by a concept board, by a material board and by a furniture board if you are working on an interior space. I hope that this video can help you have a clear understanding of all the boards that we make for interior design. And remember that this should be a fun process, so just try to enjoy it. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.